Hi everybody, Thomas here at Rebel Income. Recently, Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, offered a pretty contrarian view of the state of the economy in the United States. Never one to shy away from a controversial opinion, Mr. Dimon downplayed progress in curbing inflation, pointing instead to economic elements he believes could keep inflation and interest rates higher than expected. One of those elements, what Dimon called the remilitarization of the world, really caught my attention. First, because I think there could be some wisdom in what he's saying. Prolonged war in Ukraine, as well as in Palestine, have prompted world governments, including the United States, to start increasing their buildup of military assets. That's been confirmed by recent reports pointing to the biggest global increase in defense spending in the past decade. My second thought about this forecast was to think about defense companies and their place in the broad market. If Mr. Diamond is correct and inflation does begin to rise again, it's reasonable to suggest that the Fed could be forced to raise the rates even higher. That's a bearish forecast for the market and the aerospace and defense industry in that case should be a place where investors can mitigate some of that risk. Now, if Mr. Diamond isn't correct about inflation, his observation about remilitarization still bears weight because the numbers strongly and clearly indicate that defense is an industry that's seeing an increase in demand. That's a bullish sign for the industry no matter what happens in the broader market, which is why it's natural to think about the companies that might represent useful targets of opportunity. My analysis has uncovered some interesting details about some of the largest companies in the defense and aerospace industry. I've identified five of the top aerospace and defense stocks. They all focus on providing commercial and military aircraft and aircraft components, along with a broad mix of aerospace and defense solutions and technologies. All five should benefit from forecasted increases in global defense spending, but out of the five, I've identified two companies that I think are best positioned for the future. I'm going to cover all five so you can see why these two stand above the rest. Our first comparison is on the basis of free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is a more effective way to measure profitability compared to earnings because free cash flow calculations are harder to manipulate than earnings have proven to be over the course of the last 25 years. Growth or decline of free cash flow over the last year is a good way to see if a company has been effective in growing their profits. Free cash flow yield is a number that measures a company's general health. The basic rule for free cash flow yield to follow is the higher the number, the better. Lockheed Martin and RTX Corporation both saw positive free cash flow growth over the last year. Of the group, they also boast the highest free cash flow yield. RTX really stands out from the group by virtue of the fact the company more than doubled their free cash flow growth over the last year. That's an excellent indication they're running their business efficiently. In general, all five companies have adequate liquidity. However, we can see from the cash to debt ratio that low cash relative to debt isn't an unusual characteristic for this industry. RTX stands alone by virtue of the fact they've increased the amount of cash over the last year However, they also increased their long-term debt by more than 27% over the same period. General Electric towers above the entire group in this metric, with fortress-level strength in their balance sheet that includes more cash than long-term debt, despite the fact that cash declined by a little more than 6% over the last year. The reason high debt relative to cash isn't necessarily an unusual characteristic in some industries is because unlike consumer debt, corporate debt is not categorically bad. Debt is often used to finance expansion through mergers and acquisition. It can also be used to invest in research and development in areas of the business where management expects to see higher growth over time. Our next metric will give us a little more insight about the company's operational efficiency which can provide help to determine about whether current debt levels are manageable. Net income is a very straightforward metric. It describes the portion of revenues that's left after a company subtracts all business expenses. Dividing net income by revenues yields a percentage that's effective 
in measuring how much revenue a company is able to retain from its revenues over a quarter or a year. Comparing the quarter's net income to revenue percentage to the last year's percentage is an easy way to see if profit margins are increasing or decreasing over time. All five companies have adequately healthy operating profitability, but General Dynamics and Lockheed Martin both saw this metric decline in the last quarter, while General Electric, Northrop Grumman, and RTX Corporation both saw sizable improvements, implying that all three have improved their ability to service their debt. When you consider net income relative to revenue, along with free cash flow growth, the fact that RTX improved both metrics puts it at the top of the heap in this category. They've improved their operating efficiencies more than any of the other companies in this list. That mitigates at least somewhat the fact that their operating cash has declined over the last year. With all of that fundamental data in mind, it might not be too surprising to see that RTX offers the best value proposition of all of the stocks in this cohort of aerospace and defense titans. General Dynamics and General Electric, on the other hand, are very overvalued, which suggests that downside risk is much greater than upside opportunity in those stocks. Lockheed Martin is also overvalued, though at a more moderate level. Northrop Grumman is also very undervalued at its current price, and with significant improvement in its operating profile as shown by our net income to revenue metric, it's reasonable to consider Northrop Grumman and RTX Corporation together as the aerospace and defense industry's two most attractive stocks. Their dividend yields aren't compelling, but are enough to add the benefit of a useful passive income source on top of the long-term value opportunity. It's interesting to me that while RTX Corporation and Northrop Grumman represent the best value-based opportunities, Northrop is the only stock out of the five that fits into the picture that a value-driven contrarian like me tends to look for. With a drop since the start of May at around $490 to its current price at about $438, NOC is down a little over 10% over that period while RTX has followed essentially the same pattern as the rest of the group, which have all been hovering near to their 52-week high prices. That doesn't make RTX less attractive as a value-driven opportunity. The fact is that the stock still looks like a very attractive bargain, despite the fact that it's increased in price by more than 57% since its October 2023 low. It's unexpected, but not impossible which is why RTX Corporation, along with Northrop Grumman, stand out as the aerospace and defense stocks that I believe provide the best long-term opportunities in this industry right now. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Help me keep providing new content about how to change your financial life by hitting the subscribe button along with the bell so you'll get notified every time I upload new content. If you want exclusive early access to my videos, and to my free self-paced investing home study video library, sign up for a free membership on my Patreon page. That link is in the description area of this video. Thanks for your time, everybody. I'm Thomas. Talk to you again soon.